The wall finally defrosted. All the lines are snapped. Kyle hung the windows and trimmed the windows. We are ready. So after lunch, we're going to side this thing. We think it'll take us two hours to side. I'm hoping it's a little less. I'm really not looking forward to this. Are you looking forward to this? No, no, no. No, neither. It's like doing hardwood, except... Except it's not hard with it. Except it's siding. Except it's siding. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. In the previous video, you saw us frame the wall in front of you. We started with layout of the bottom plates and took it all the way through the wall sheathing and then the taping. That was day one. This is day two. Unfortunately, while we knew we were gonna have good weather and it was pretty chilly, we did not anticipate coming into a wall that was completely covered with ice. We were able to thaw that ice and dry out the panels around the window openings using a few tricks that I will never show on YouTube. You can probably guess what they are, but I will never say what they are. Okay, so let's get into the video. We're gonna start with setting the windows. I'm gonna go ahead and let this section of the video play in real time, and you're gonna see how long it takes to actually set one of these windows in the wall. Now earlier in the time lapse, you could see that Kyle installed a bead of sealant or caulking on the legs and the top of the jam. We like to use big stretch. Now what he's doing is he's pulling the window down and away and up and toward. Does that even make sense? <laughs> Pull it up into the corner, mark it, push it opposite, mark it, and then center that flange. Now, how do you get windows level in a wall where you can't actually level anything? will allow Kyle to show you. Now that that corner is screwed in, that's our pivot point. Earlier in our series, remember that we shot our pony walls in with a laser. That means that our bottom plates are level, especially in four feet, which is the size of this window. It's a 4040 window, four foot by four foot. So he's gonna just pull parallel from the bottom plates. Now, besides level, remember, in the previous video, we tacked those plates to the line on the floor. That's why we trust this process. So now he's just gonna make sure that the top of the window is parallel to the floor. Since the floor is level, the window's level. It's literally that simple, by the way. It's that simple. Now he puts the fastener there. The instructions say to check for square. Yes, some of the commenters have commented that it's extremely rare for these windows to be out of square, but that's the point. It's not impossible to find one out of square. It's just rare. So square it. Can you spare a square? What about a ply? Elaine Bennis reference. Square to level, of course, is plump. So that's how we center windows in the jam. That's how we make sure that everything fits and operates the way that it is supposed to. Once that's the case, go ahead and fasten the whole thing. And then of course you eyeball the sides. Where he's screwing right there, there's no point in eyeballing because that is a solid piece of glass. We're not going to be able to move that even if we needed to. So we just have to go with it. That's part of the reason why you check windows before you even put them in the hole or in the opening. Always check the bottom for straight. And of course check the operable side for straight. Now here's a, a tip from me to you. When the window is laying in the hole like this, we almost never have to adjust something. But if we set the windows after the fact, now gravity's working against us, and there's always some adjustment. So we actually find that besides being bent over, which isn't fun, this is actually a much cleaner install, and everything operates really well. It takes a whole lot less, um, it just takes a whole lot less finesse to make everything fit. Less finesse. Hey, here at Awesome Framers, we believe in less finesse. While Kyle has been setting those windows immaculately, then I'm coming behind and I'm flashing the windows. So I'm taping the legs, then I tape the top. The sill, of course, has already been flashed. You saw that in a previous video. And then, of course, we roll the tape. Now, please pay attention to the wall. Notice how wet that wall is. As you go through some of the time lapse, notice how quickly the wall dries out. It's just surface moisture. But that sun, even at like, I think it was 35, 38 degrees that morning, but once that sun was on, it was on the wall. Yeah, so once somebody turned on the sun, <laughs> once it got around the trees, once that sun was hitting the wall, just watch throughout the time lapse just how quickly it actually dries out. It always amazes me, even in the wintertime. You know, 
I'm amazed by the heat of the sun. Okay, I'm shutting up now. Besides somebody finally turning on the sun, pause for laughter. Okay, blowing off the wall really does help as the ice melts and you get little puddles and drops. Blow that bulk water off and then let the sun take care of what's left. And you'll be able to observe that as we go. Kyle is taking an assembly line approach. He invented that, not Henry Ford, contrary to what you might think. Notice that he goes and he cuts all of the bottoms of the windows, then all of the legs, then all of the head pieces. Then he's able to cut the drip metal for that top piece because he already knows the length of that trim piece. The trim is five quarter by four LP smart side. We love the trim. We love the siding. This video is not sponsored by LP or smart side or any of their affiliates. I wish that it was, but it is not. We just really like the product and have used it for years. So free plug for you LP. So Kyle's just staying into a nice rhythm. And that's honestly how you make up for not moving fast. <laughs> we already had a hard day frame in the wall. We're going to have a hard day siding the wall. So if you have good techniques, you don't have to kill your body. Kyle is in a groove, so I'm just going to leave him alone. He knows what he needs to do, what he's already done, all that good stuff. So I'm just going to leave him alone. What is it that I'm going to do? I'm going to start layout for siding. That middle seam, I blew off a little drier, even though you can see the wall's not dry and I do not snap lines on anything wet because it ruins my chalk line. Now I have a control point. I'm just gonna mark six inches off of that everywhere. Real simple. Now the way that we get siding layout, I showed this in a balloon framing video earlier, is we measured from the mud sill, two inches below the mud sill, and then we just lay out that pony wall on the right until you get to the subfloor. The top of the subfloor is the bottom of your um, bottom plate. And so we're able to just do some simple math. It's really easy. I don't snap lines the full length of the wall. I get a better line if I go about the halfway point. So it just means that my Fitbit is recording the steps. So I will easily have a 10,000 step day, <laughs> probably by two o'clock. And yeah, it, it's a little mindless, but who cares? What we're doing right now is we're prepping for the production work. So with a nice control point, then I can just lay out sixes around things, get it around the windows. Again, I'm trying to stay out of Kyle's way. And, oh, did you notice the wall? You can see it's starting to dry out. So I, that's why I felt comfortable. No, no standing water, that's why I felt comfortable snapping lines. I snap in blue. Our floor layout's always in black because it's permanent, but black, when it gets all over your hands, it will crack them in the winter time, dry them out, so I go with blue getting a little bit of a game plan for how we want to side it because as soon as we get this thing prepped, then we're going to take lunch and then the real fun begins. In the meantime, it's just a whole bunch of back and forth, back and forth. Now that Kyle's got the metal on, of course, I'm going to tape that. And you guessed it, roll that tape. Okay, we are just about ready. The last little bit, he's going to help me snap. And in like five minutes, we're there. Now, who wants to side the Great Wall? I know two guys that aren't looking forward to it. Okay, just for the sake of the timestamp, that is the only reason we're doing this story. On your mark, ready, set, go. And if you want to be productive, stage your materials. We know this wall is going to take a lot of 16 footers. I think when I, when I added this up to calculate the wall weight, I think if I recall my notes, it was 100 pieces of smart side. So we just drag a few bundles into place. And that way Kyle's gonna be the cut man with those bundles in place. Then I'm able to get quite a bit done while he's cutting pieces and cutting around windows. And now it's just a matter of Kyle's gonna anticipate what I need. We've worked together for what, 15, 16 years? Like we know this process, right? I taught him how to side, but then the it, it's an iterative process. So we've adjusted it all as we've gone over the years. So basically, we're, we're basically the same person with that. 
Think of it like a hive mind that's off-site somewhere, and we're just the we're just the drones or ciders. Notice on the bottom right those little black pieces of metal. Right there again at the butt joints. That is a five inch by eight inch piece of metal. It's a step flash, about 59 cents a piece. So for about 100 bucks a house, we get enough of these little pan flash or um, slip sheet is the other word that we've always called them. Basically at the butt joint, LP wants a 3 16 gap and then sealant. And that meets their warranty. But they also have a detail where you can avoid the sealant if you put pan flashing at the butt joints. So what Kyle and I are figuring out right there is that from the window to our wall is more than 16 foot, but not a lot more is what's gonna look best for the joints. We typically stagger four feet. Okay, back to the slip sheet. So if we add an extra coat of paint to the factory primed butt ends and a slip sheet, then we can avoid putting sealant at those joints. Now what's the advantage of that? The advantage is no maintenance for the homeowner. And as this material will swell some, those joints will close somewhat. Now, what we do is we measure the siding ahead of time and if it has already been weathered and it measures something like 16 foot one quarter, we already know it swelled as much as it will and we'll lightly touch those pieces together. We've had really good success with that method. Okay, beyond all of that, there is nothing to do but stay busy and keep everything straight on those lines. Kyle is keeping track of all the pieces. I'll call them out. I'll give him measurements around windows. And we have a gun at each end of the wall and we have material staged. So now it is literally just a matter of seeing where to go next. So I have this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and nail it. I'm gonna nail it to all of the framing. But because we're framing two foot on center, I'm also putting a nailing between the framing. That's nailing it to the zip panel itself. And there is an APA or the Engineered Wood Association. They have a tech note on that. Yes, it's okay to nail your siding just to the 7 16 sheeting. But of course I can see the framing through the zip, so I'm obviously going to nail it there as well. That was a closer look of the um, step flash. While Kyle stockpiles more siding, then I know I'm probably gonna need more nails, so I'm gonna go make sure those nails are close to where I need them. It's all about staging. At the same time, this is a couple hours of being bent over, which makes the hammies and the glutes burn, but, uh, no, <laughs> pun intended, pun not intended. So it's okay to take some breaks and walk around and kind of shake it out. Our goal is not to work as fast as possible, our goal is to work as efficient as possible. And almost always, efficiency beats out. And it certainly will if you had to do this for hours upon hours. Normally our walls are not this big, but my goodness, in two hours, we're gonna side this wall. What do you think it would take you if you set up staging and you sided it a month down the road when all of the walls are up? Yeah, we just get such efficiency out of this wall that it's okay to use up some of that efficiency to take care of your body. Okay, enough, enough said about that. You guys get the point. I'm sorry I had to cut the audio there. We were blasting some um, guitar laden speed music to kind of help us get through the afternoon. And I don't want to deal with copyright claims. So you're, you're really missing a lot of the dialogue. So I will just put some other music over the top of that. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention, I think you can see it right here. The proper way to install smart side, whether it's on the wall when it's up or it's down like this, is that material can be a little squirrely. Because we have snap lines, I have a reference point. 
So I typically will nail at like every four feet. So I nail the butt end, then four feet away, and then, then back to zero. And then at eight feet, and then from eight feet back to four feet, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you'll see that as I go through. You might also see how some of the pieces bend and I need to push them down to the line. That's just the technique that gets you the straightest siding. Yeah, watch this right hand side. Right at that tape, when I go to put the slip sheet in, you'll see that I have to push it. So I'm looking for the line. Yeah, now I push it down. Right there, see how far that pushes? So it had a tendency to kind of like pop up a quarter. Sometimes it's the opposite. That's why we snap lines for everything. But as you can see, it took no time. I think it took about a half an hour to lay out that entire wall. So that's to me, that's time very well spent. Uh, if I did it again, you eagle-eyed astute observers have noticed that the little UPC sticker is right at that butt joint. I should have flipped over that slip sheet. So don't tell anybody. That'll just be our secret. You and the nine billion other people that will just kidding. Watch this video. Yeah, but, oh, I did it again. <laughs> There's the sticker. Okay, so you can see Awesome Framers. Started out as a joke name. We're not awesome. We're not awesome ciders either. But uh, then really who is? Who is? Except the people who just comment negatively, but never post their own work. You know who you are, peeps. Oh, and I should mention, notice on the right-hand side where the siding is at the, at the end of the wall, I have a snap line one inch in. That's what I'm aligning everything to so that when the other wall goes in, I can wrap the tape to that one inch line and then we're gonna cover our corners with one by six corner boards. Okay, we are making steady progress. Okay, I gotta go, I gotta go. We're making steady progress. Have you observed that we do not have our overhangs built? Yeah, this was the job that we tried out Mark Hendrickson's method of where we're gonna run all the siding wild at the, uh, at the rake there. Our goal is to not have to pull out a square or a pattern for any of those rake cuts. So we're gonna run them long we're gonna snap a line about, what is it? Five and a half plus the soffit, so six. We're gonna snap a line six and a quarter down and cut those off. 
And just watch as we roll through the time lapse how we're able to use up the scrap as we go. Really easy, easy process. And it, it, like we've done this wall before. Um, this is the fourth house. This is by far the fastest that this wall has gone. So everything's iterative, right? We just keep trying to make the process better each time that we do it. And sometimes we're even successful at that. So that's always, always feels good when that happens. Not if that happens, but when that happens. As you can see, and I am not gonna hide from this fact, I am not moving fast. One, I have my winter weight, so I uh, need to drop some LBs. By the way, as I edit this video, I just gotten a new bike so I can start road biking in addition to the treadmill work. I, I, gotta, I gotta get rid of that uh, six pack there that doesn't look like a six pack and I need to shrink it. Anyway, that by the way is a Makita high pressure siding gun. The thing is like four pounds. It's ridiculously lightweight. So at, at least something on me is getting lighter. <laughs> oh man, it's only funny because it's sad. Yeah. So this is great, right? It's just a bunch of 16 foot pieces. Then we're gonna cut up, cut them off, flip them over, and then we'll do it again as we go up the rake. Pretty self-explanatory what we're doing from here on out. It's just like hardwood, except it's not hardwood. I don't know how those guys do it, honestly. Way more fun to watch in time-lapse mode, right? So there it is, snap a line, cut it. I'm still trying to figure out the depth because I don't want to score the zip below it, but I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Also, don't nail where you need to cut. I've, uh, there's, there's a chubby guy there in tan pants who's done that a couple times. But you can see how fast that goes, right? And since you're cutting along a straight line, you get a nice straight, um, straight cut up underneath the soffit once it's installed. And then as you noticed in a previous video, we're gonna install one by six up against the soffit and hide all those cut ends anyway. It's gonna look a lot better as the decades roll by and it's a lot easier for us. Anybody else getting tired? I'm getting a little tired. Okay, not too bad. Now we gotta do overhangs. We're gonna be out of here by three and this wall is gonna be ready for rigging. If you've watched our previous videos where we show this, our method's really simple. It's a two by six nailed to the double top plates of the wall underneath. And then we put blocks about every eight feet, six feet. You can see there's not really a rhyme or reason. We want one basically on each end and then we space it out enough that when we sheet that with the LP soffit, everything's gonna be nice and straight. So part of the strength of the system comes from nailing that two by six down to the wall and then toe nailing on both sides those little blocks. The soffit material that we use is 12 inches by 16 foot and that goes a long way into keeping the wall stiff. So we make these overhangs 12 and a quarter, and that just gives us some, I don't know, we really don't probably need to do that but at this point, but we've always done that to just give us a little bit of play. We hold it up to the top so that it's nice and flat or nice and straight to that two by six. And then when we install the five quarter, you can kind of see Kyle getting started on that. Five quarter by eight smart side trim, you're gonna have a nice sharp joint. At the top, we have one of our slip sheets that essentially is just a piece of metal across that miter joint, and that helps to keep that uh, joint from opening as we lift the wall. This is just an iterative process. I know, I've already said that. We didn't get it all right the first time, we just keep fixing things and getting better as we go. Ain't no shame in that, I'll, I'll say it. We're not perfect. And we did it, we did it. So Monday, we've got a crane lift, mid-morning, late, uh, we don't even know but we'll get this thing braced, braced, probably mock up a tail so that we can hang fascia. We will rig it and lift it with the forklift high enough to make sure that those points are gonna work. And then whenever the crane shows up, probably, we got some beams to lift on another job, but then they'll be out here. 200 bucks an hour, probably gonna take an hour to set the wall behind me, this guy, and then the one in the garage that's gonna go over there. Yeah, this was a very good two days worth of work. Hey Kyle. It's Friday, man. It's Friday. I don't know. I don't know. I'll go. I'll go get the drone. 
And that's it. By the way, I did have the wrong dollar amount on the crane. We'll get into that in the next video. There is the Great Wall. The wall in the garage that will go in the front and the wall in the back that, of course, will go in the back. There is the Great Wall. Parts of two days. See, it's not about how fast you move. It's about how smart you move and a little how fast you move. <laughs> Thank you so much for following along. This was two good days of work. We had good weather. It's not usual in January to get weather like this. It was chilly, but sunny. Ah, it felt good to sweat. When things are going well, ah, it's so satisfying. And hey, let's do some obligatory drone shots. I still had the energy to run across the wall. Kyle's just laying there. And one last shot. Yeah, did I fool you? Fooled a few people on Instagram. Yep, we staged that shot. <laughs> I sent this to our engineer. Okay, thank you guys so much. In the next video, we're gonna actually lift the wall. I have a ton of drone footage, lots of GoPro footage. I'll show you how we brace the walls. It'll be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for part three. Please like and subscribe. Tell all of your friends and family. And we will see you in the next video.